Hey folks, it's John with CageTropicals.com. In today's video, we're going to talk all about sump filtration systems, sump maintenance, and more specifically, the seamless sump systems from CustomAquariums.com. Now, all of the concepts and all of the things that I'm going to show you today will apply pretty much to any kind of sump system. But since I have this one, it makes sense to go ahead and use this for all of the demos. But of course, whether you already have one or you're thinking about getting a new one, no matter what, there's going to be something that you'll be able to get from this. So what is a sump filter and why do so many fish keepers use them? A sump is a large aquarium filtration system that in most cases is going to be installed below or behind the aquarium. These systems are usually made up of multiple compartments that each have their own purpose. A sump usually starts off with a mechanical filtration compartment. Mine here has a filter sock, but you'll also see some that'll have sponges or other types of mechanical filtration. Then it's usually followed up with a bio and chemical product compartment where you can put your bio balls or whatever kind of purigens or anything like that that you're using. And then it'll be followed up with the larger tank area. And that's the actual sump. The sump is the compartment that will house the pumps that return the water to the main aquarium. And this is normally where you'll see most fish keepers install their heaters. My system also has a reserve tank. This is a tank that stays full of water. When water evaporates from the system, it pulls water from this reserve, so I never have to top off my tank between water changes. The reason why sump systems are so efficient is because of all of the different options that you have with all of the different compartments available, but also because of the amount of water that is processed through these things. You can usually flow a lot more water through here than you could your typical canister filter. This one behind me processes about 1,500 gallons of water per hour, which means that tank gets turned over about six times per hour. That's huge. When we talk about the different options available for sumps, there's a couple big ones that I really want to point out here. The first one is refugiums. Refugiums are a section of the system where live plants are grown. The live plants help with nitrate control and can also be used to modify pH levels. A great example of that would be peat moss. A lot of discus keepers want to lower the pH in their tank by including peat moss, but they don't want it to be seen in their main tank. A refugium is a great place to put the plants, get the full effects that the plants have to offer, and it's all hidden below the tank. So now that you have a general understanding of what a sump is, let's talk about maintaining one. This is something a lot of fish keepers could be intimidated by, but as you'll see in this little demo, it's not much more difficult than maintaining a canister filter. I like to start off, first of all, in the main tank by siphoning out, cleaning out the gravel, vacuuming the gravel, get that part of it over with, and then get to a point where the water is simply draining out. You've already vacuumed all the gravel and it's good to go. I just like to let it sit there and drain for a little while, but eventually you're gonna get to a point where the sump is going to be completely depleted of water because it's not receiving any water to send back in the tank. You're gonna wanna immediately unplug the system from that point on. Now I have a switch on mine that I just flick it and the whole system turns off. But if you don't have that, you're gonna to wanna to unplug your pumps. If you don't, and your pumps are sitting there running with no water going through them, you could easily burn them out. While the tank continues to drain, the next thing that I like to do is take a couple of five gallon buckets, fill them each about halfway up with aquarium water. It's critical that we use aquarium water here, not water from the tap, because we want this water to be dechlorinated. We're gonna use this water eventually to clean out our sponges and clean out our media. If this was water from the tap, it could have chlorine in it, which would completely kill all of the bacteria in there, and we'd have to recycle this tank all over again. So this is a critical step. Always use aquarium water. Now it is inevitable. I don't care how sophisticated your system is, you're always gonna have waste and leftover food and nasty, muddy, gunky stuff down in the sump or in your canister filter. I like to go to each individual compartment and siphon all or as much of that stuff out as I possibly can. Anything that's left over is gonna be something that could potentially cause problems. So I like to get in there and take a small hose and siphon out as much of it as I can. Never gonna be able to get all of it, but it's a really important thing for me to get as much out of it as I can. Do this about every two months or so. 
Now that you've gotten as much of that nasty stuff out as you can, it's time to address the media trays. This is where those buckets of aquarium water are going to come in. I like to take each tray and just kind of swish it around in the water a little bit to remove any kind of loose debris, but I do not let them dry out and I do not scrub them. All I'm trying to do is get loose debris to fall off of the media. The media that I use are very small ceramic balls that came with the system and it would be very easy to lose a whole bunch of them so all I try to do is swish it around a little bit but inevitably a few of them are going to fall out while I'm cleaning and I got to reach in there and get them. No big deal. But I'll do this for each individual tray and I'll also rinse out the bag of Purigen and place it back into there. Now what we've also done here is while I was doing this off camera, Lisa is actually cutting small pieces of foam for me that I'll be using as layers in between each media tray and that'll act as a little bit more of a mechanical filtration for me. So we'll go through, clean each individual tray, uh, swish it through the water, get it clean but not too clean, and then replace the foam, stack them all back together again, and put them back into the container there. Very simple, easy to do. The biggest key is to remember to use aquarium water so that you do not kill all that beautiful beneficial bacteria. Now it's time to clean out the filter sock. Now the filter sock is kind of like your first line of defense in your tank. It's the first thing that the water hits when it enters into this system. So it's going to accumulate a lot of the nasty stuff. So this is one of the more gross parts of the process. Some people won't like doing it, but it has to be done. And it actually has to be done much more regularly than just a, a routine cleaning of your sump. If you're going to deep clean the sump like we're doing today, once every couple of months or so, you're going to want to do this every few weeks, especially if you have a highly populated aquarium. So it's nasty work, but get in there, clean it out again using aquarium water, stick it back into place and everything should work fine. So there we are, we have it all cleaned out. We've got new sponges on the media trays. We should be good to go. It's time to fill it back up again. Now I will warn you, when you do a deep cleaning on a sump like this, or really any time you ever turn your sump off, when you turn it back on again, you're inevitably going to get some of that nasty stuff that sprays back up into your aquarium. And you're gonna feel like you've just completely ruined the whole project because all of a sudden all this nasty stuff is shooting in. Don't panic, you've just been rummaging up all of that stuff, it's all in there loose, it just needs to be sent back through the system, get collected by all of those sponges and your filter sock and everything will be fine. Just don't be alarmed when you get all of that nasty spit back. Give it a little time, it'll clear up and you'll be glad you did it. So there you go. I hope that's helped you to get a little better understanding of how sumps work and all of the different options that they have available for you. If you're interested in a system like this from customaquariums.com, send me an email at kgtropicals at gmail.com. We'll work together. We'll get a system put together for you that is the system of your dreams. We can talk about just a sump or we can put an entire system like this together and you can have a dream tank just like that. I also want to encourage you to go over to kgtropicals.com and give the new KG Tropicals Premium Cichlid Pellets a try. They're selling like absolute crazy and maybe you might even want to pick up a few Christmas gifts. We've got all of these plush plecos that stick right to your aquarium. They're absolutely adorable. We've got all of those on the website. They're only $11.99, folks. Pick up some food, pick up a couple of those, one for you, one for a friend for Christmas. Everybody wins. And of course, there's always our affiliates, which you see listed here. These are companies that are offering huge discounts for KG Tropicals followers. So believe me, while you're sitting there on your butt doing nothing on a Sunday, it'll be worth your time to go over there and check out one of those websites. Save some money again. Everybody wins. It's a beautiful thing. In next week's video, I'm going to share with you my routine for doing water changes down here in the fish room. I've got nine tanks down here and three of them are pretty big. So I've got a pretty good system in place that's very efficient and I can do water changes very fast. So you're definitely going to want to subscribe so you don't miss that. And also don't forget to join me on one or both of the two live streams that I do every single week 
Tuesdays at 9 p.m. I live stream on the Tank Talk Facebook group. If you're not a member, join today. The link is in the top of the description. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday night. And then I do another one every single Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube. So join me for that. We'll have all kinds of fun. Thank you so much for watching this, and I look forward to talking to you again next week. Yeah.